Many reagents and also some highly purified solvents are supplied under nitrogen in bottles sealed with a septum and these require the use of syringes along with the simple manifold apparatus illustrated here. The manifold is supplied with a steady stream of nitrogen and the oil filled bubbler at the end is useful to judge the flow rate. There are three main types of syringes for significant amounts of air sensitive liquids. The first is a disposable plastic syringe which offers a tight seal between the barrel and piston but no permanent lock connection to the needle. Hence these need to be used with a little care if the needle is not to come adrift in the middle of your work. The syringe shown has a rubber seal at the end of the piston and this can occasionally swell up with some chemicals and cause difficulties though you can usually get away with a single use of these syringes for most applications. Disposable syringes without this rubber seal are quite common also and may be a safer bet with most chemicals. The second sort has a glass piston and barrel which does not give quite such a good seal but has a lure lock attachment to fix the needle more efficiently. The third type shown is the gas tight variety which combines the best of both worlds though at a price. The bottle of air sensitive reagent or solvent should be clamped securely in place under the nitrogen supply provided by the manifold. The syringe may then be purged with nitrogen by inserting the needle into the dead space above the solution and sucking up nitrogen before releasing it back into the atmosphere. This is usually performed at least twice with particularly air sensitive reagents. The needle is then inserted into the solution and the required amount withdrawn. Next, the needle is raised into the dead space again and carefully bent through 180 degrees whilst drawing up nitrogen to ensure that all reagent solution is sucked up the needle and into the barrel prior to transferring it to the reaction flask. This avoids any drops of solution flying off the end of the needle when it is pulled out of the septum. The syringe is subsequently raised to its original position and the solution is then added slowly to the reaction flask which is usually equipped with a stirrer bar, thermometer and of course its own nitrogen supply. After use, the syringe and needle need cleaning of any potentially reactive residue. The method of destruction of these residues will depend on the nature of the reagent itself and experienced colleagues will be able to help here. When they have been cleaned, plastic syringes may be discarded with the general waste whilst glass syringes and long needles may be washed and reused. The shorter disposable needles shouldn't be resheathed but discarded in a sin bin.